So everyone, thanks for tuning in to Whiskey and Synths. This is the channel that blends whiskey drinking with music making. So in this episode today, we're going to look at how to make a track from micro sampling. So using sources like cassettes or other sources to micro sample little details and make tracks out of it. Not too much whiskey on this episode today because we finished our bottle of Lafroy last night. Oh no, it's beautiful whiskey. Uh, actually left over from our Edinburgh Festival of Sound episodes, which you should check out. So we've got content from Edinburgh Festival of Sound, we've got artist interviews, we've got studio tours, we've got gear demonstrations and a lot more. So if you like this one, maybe you could hit the subscribe, hit the ding, hit the bell button so you get notified of other shows coming up. Also, since I've run out of whiskey, good chance to tell you about my new service. It's called Buy Me A Whiskey, Buy Dave A Whiskey. So there's a link down below, it says buymeacoffee.com. I'll actually be using the money for whiskey. The idea is you send me the equivalent price of a drama whiskey, and in return, I will send you a video back answering any question you've got to do with music. Any question on music or music making, you do this for me, I'll send you a video back as a wee thank you answering the questions best I can. And if you really love the channel and want to see your support, we've also got these Whiskey and Sins t-shirts, which you might want to get as well in black or white. I'll link them in the videos below as well. So thanks for all the support so far, everyone. Thanks for all the watches. Uh, love and developing this channel with you guys. Let's get into this story of making a track from micro sampling. I'll let you hear a little clip from the one I made already. Also, one thing I want to say just before we go on is you'll notice our episodes of Whiskey and Synths are normally every two weeks, but this one's in between, you're getting an extra one. So this one's actually just a big thank you to all the people who showed support buying t-shirts and music from Whiskey and Synths and our, our sister label called Tonic Note Records in the last week. So a big shout out to, here's the names we've got, Michael Butter, Thomas Geffen Jones, Lucy Gordon, Jennifer Ponsop, Keith Jones, and Miles Brady. So thank you so much for supporting the channel and Tonic Note Records by getting the music and the t-shirts. Uh, owe you a lot. Thanks very much and enjoy this one. <laughs> So everyone, now you've heard a little clip from the track that I've made and the little animation I matched it to. You might think, why do this, Dave? It sounds a bit crazy, a bit weird. An answer is to take micro samples from sources like cassettes, like this one here, or other sources. It's a cool way of getting new sounds that not many other people have. So to be honest, I love my drum machines, love my synths, love VSTs and plugins. But sometimes you can get a little bit, you know, oh man, I've heard all this before. So uh, you can get these micro samples and start making sounds that are truly your own. Now the track I made, I'm hoping to do more composition for media, for video, for TV, for films. And originality in that field is quite uh, uh, kind of, people look forward to it. Uh, like if you listen to this soundtrack from The Lighthouse, it's very kind of avant-garde and crazy sounds. Uh, so it's worth um, doing if you're into that, but for your own tracks, maybe you won't make a whole track out of micro samples, but adding a few layers of that can make it sound a bit more original. So that's one of the reasons it's worth doing in your track. 
So now we know a little bit about why you might want to micro sample, uh, a good question is what sources are you going to use? So I thought, well, in the house, I uh, didn't want to go out and get new stuff. I had a lot of cassettes. I love them. They're just my favorite thing ever. They're so cool. I think it's nostalgia. You know, I grew up through the 90s, had tape machines. The first ever music device I had was a tape machine. Uh, me and my brother used to record radio shows on it, like, oh, blah, 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 blah. It was quite fun. Hopefully, we've still got these tapes somewhere. So, you know, I've still got some tapes. I've still got little tape players like this guy. Oh, man, this is the best eBay find ever. Look, it's the best bling ever as well. This is the Philips Moving Sound Walkman style cassette player. Absolutely triangle, speaker on the bottom, opens out like that, put your cassettes in there, battery powered. It's amazing, I love it so much. So the Philips Moving Sound. Uh, I've got this in the house, I've got some tapes, so I'm going to use them and micro sample the tapes today. Now, you might not have cassettes, don't worry, I'll put the recordings I've taken as a G Drive link down below so you guys can get the samples I used if you don't have any of your own. Or you can use other things if you've got even a smartphone, record things in your house, just the ambience or like sound from, I don't know, anything like in the kitchen. Or if you're out, your one walk per day, record the quiet sounds of the city. Or you could, if you've got a record player, you could cook that up and record some records and then micro sample them. Um, or even from your TV, maybe if you do something like that. So you can use your imagination or you can use the files that I link to here as well. Uh, but you need a source to micro sample. And I recommend using something that sounds a bit grainy, distorted, and natural. So when you micro sample it, you'll get all these weird artifacts in the sound. And that's kind of what you're looking for. It's a really distinctive character. We're not looking to get like a four bar loop or a vocal. We're on kind of little tiny slices with lots of artifacts and character that you can use to create brand new melodies or percussive sounds out of. So, one thing I've got to mention when you're sampling anything, you've got to think of copyright. And uh, if you sample someone else's thing and they're like, hey, he sampled it illegally, you don't have permission, you get in big trouble for it, your track gets taken down, all that kind of stuff. And it's not to do with the length of what you sample, it's to do with like, if you sample an essential, important bit of the music, like essential is kind of the word there in the legal terms. So you've got to be quite careful because even if you have like, Led Zeppelin's a good example, like da, da, you know, you just the opening of one of their songs, you just know that's Led Zeppelin. So be careful what you sample. In this case, I've got this like really old cassette all the way from India. It's got no English written on it at all. It looks like it's from about 1940, but it says 1982 on the box. Uh, this guy looks awesome. Actually, there's a little bit of English on the front. Uh, it's a really old tape. Uh, got it from a charity shop for 99p, the Oxfam charity shops. So, you know, once the shops are back open again, get down to Oxfam, get the 99p tapes. So, I'm hoping this lad, Mana um, Berdran Burkiji, hopefully, if he's watching this, he'll be like, cool, Dave, this is for educational purposes anyway. You can use my thing, because I'm only using it for a showreel my track and for this one you know education hopefully you guys can uh, use it and have fun making stuff out of it so that's one tape i'm going to use and the other one is hair band so great glasgow band luckily i know them so uh, i'll message them and i'll make sure they're like cool dave you can use this in your video education purposes and that so maybe a band you know is put out a tape and they're cool with you to micro sample it. And in a, in a way, if your track does well, it might even get them a bit more publicity, I don't know. Uh, but Hair Band, check them out. Amazing Glasgow indie band as well. So you might wanna check these guys out. But in regards to copyright, the more obscure, the better, to be honest. If you can sample from your mates, even if you've put out your own cachet, resample it, okay? That's worth doing as well. So a little bit on copyright as well there. One last thing I want to say about sources as well is when you source it, you notice I've chosen Indian music and indie bands, okay? Uh, not just because it's Indian, indie, it sounds similar, it's because I normally make electronic music. So if you sample an electronic track, like synthesizer, tape, whatever, you're probably not gonna get loads of new sounds you haven't heard before in electronic music. So 
try and think outside the box a bit. Think, oh, could I sample a classical thing with jazz? Or, and then you might get more original sounds. And I think that's really the aim of the game when you're micro-sampling here today. I'm just going to show you how to connect up everything to get your samples into your computer. Uh, I guess similar process if you've got a phone instead of a tape player. Similar process if you've got a record player as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll show you that. On your computer, just to get ready, get a track ready in Ableton there. Make sure you're set to the input channel in audio from. I've got an input one in my sound card, so I choose input one. Monitor, click auto, arm the track as well, and then it's ready to rock. So what I'm gonna do is get a cable, and it goes into the headphone jack of here. That's the signal coming out of the tape player. And then get that cable and fire in it. Here we go, into channel one in my sound card. Going to get the tape in it as well. Here's a little tape here. Stick that in. There we go, tape's ready to go, yes. Then what you do is hit play on the tape. Set your gain volume and you'll see that channel going ding, 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 up and down there. Try and get it at minus 14 dB. So that's called Unity Gain in professional recording studios around the world. That is the signal level you want when you're recording digitally. It means it transfers if you're using outboard gear really well. It's strong enough to be a strong signal, but not too hot. And also it's not so low that you're gonna get a lot of background noise as well. So yeah, you want about minus 14 dB coming in as well. So that's your tapes connected to there. You're getting signal, you're ready to hit record, boom, and get your source into your computer, yes. So everyone, one thing you wanna do when you are getting your session ready is have a wee plan roughly of what you want to do with the samples. So you can see here that I've got one track tape one, it's called here, the Indian tape, and all the samples I've taken from it cut up kind of different sections of it. I find if you get like a wee brief minute section of one bit, four minute section of another bit, five minute section of another bit, that's all you'll need. There's another track there for the hairband one you can see with all the samples. And also if I switch to the other view, you can see I've got, you've got the tape, the tape two, and you've got the columns there with all my clips in it as well. So all you can see in my set, I've pre-prepared something as well. I've got all these channels here, kick, snare, hat, percussion, bass one, bass two, melody one, melody two, SFX one, and then if I scroll along, SFX2. Um, and also, I've set up my return channels where I reverb, ping pong delay, chorus, and the Fab Filter Saturn, which is a distortion plugin. So if I want, I can send some of the sounds to these channels to add effects really quickly. Now, in each of the channels, then what I did first was I make the kick channel, drop simpler into it and then just duplicated it along and then renamed it and color coded. So every single one of these channels has an empty simpler inside it, which you can see here. So that's quite ready for you to then take your, uh, say one of your clips, Indian Slower, into the kick, drop it down, boom, your sample is now loaded into there. And you can see it's in classic mode just now, but for micro sampling, Ableton's got an amazing feature called slice mode. So if you click slice, you can see all these orange lines appear. It slices it into all these little segments where it thinks there's a cool bit of sound. Uh, it, you can set it by slice by the transients, which is like the impacts of drums or something like that. The beat, the region, you can manually do it. But I just done it, left it as it is. And then you want to go to options, make sure your computer MIDI keyboard is on, so that's on. I want to disarm any other tracks we are armed, arm the kick track, and then I can start pressing buttons, and, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and you'll start getting all these sounds from it, uh, the micro samples, and your plan is to scroll through them, uh, you can go up and down the octaves with Z and X on your computer, uh, maybe you've got a MIDI keyboard, makes it even easier. Launch pad, drum pads, we'll all control this. But if you don't, use your computer keyboard like this and you just find cool sounds. And then what you can do is hit record and just record those patterns in as MIDI clips and I'll play it back to you. 
as well. So I done that with all the different things here and I came up with a project which I want to show you that has all my sounds in it. That's me loaded my project and as you can see it's got my sounds ready to go. So my snare, it's got the Indian one music side stuff. I've recorded in a MIDI clip of like tsh, like that. And my percussion, the same bass, the same bell, the same melody, the same. And like I went along and just found as many cool bits as I could um, as I was going along. So one little cheat is the kick drum is actually an 808 kick drum. I couldn't find a good kick drum for my samples. You might be able to, but when I was micro sampling, couldn't get a big fat kick drum like I wanted despite trying, so I got an 808 sample just there. So, everyone, hope you enjoyed and are feeling inspired to do some micro sampling. Remember, these basic steps as a recap, get your source material, I've got cassettes, get it in your computer on a few tracks, maybe you have two different sources. Remember, when you're micro sampling about, because you're using it all from maybe one or two sources, theoretically, it should all be in key as well. It shouldn't get too crazy and out of key, so, Fingers crossed that'll work for you. So you've got your sources, and then you've got your project with your tracks pre-prepared, simplers loaded each one, a few effects ready, and then you go into simpler, slice mode, mess around, get as many cool little samples, mini loops as you can, and then arrange it, boom, you've got a new track. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed that and make the most of it yourselves. Just before you go everyone, I wanna say a big thanks for watching this video. Just remember, if you liked it, you can hit that bell button, ding, hit the subscribe. You'll get notified of all other content we've got. Just a reminder, we've also got these t-shirts for sale, links down below if you wanna get some, uh, support the channel in that way. And also lastly, I'll just say, if you wanna buy me a dram, you can go to my buy me a coffee page. I'm using the money for whiskey though. <laughs> and you can ask me any question about music and in return, I'll do my best to answer that question with a video reply to you guys. So thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, hope everyone's staying safe. Try and stay you know, safe, stay happy, look after yourselves. Hit in the comments if you got any messages. Big thanks to everyone for keeping in touch, showing the support and yeah, just hope you enjoy making some music. Hopefully it takes your mind off the crazy world we're living in just now. Thanks everyone.